That's what Delaware is talking about today. All over the news, these radio stations. Question for you. Were Dave Lawson and Colin Benini wrong to walk out of an Islamic prayer during state legislature yesterday? 302-839-1059. When, uh, when I read the story, I thought a couple different things politically. First of all, I thought the lieutenant governor failed completely. Uh, she failed, that is just my opinion, she failed to set up the appearance of uh, these two guests in such a way that would, uh, that was controversial, you know what I mean? And, and then there's the larger conversation that I want to have, and that conversation begins with David Bakir, Executive Director of the Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs. And uh, Mr. Bakir is on the phone right now. So so you and I were talking uh, off the air, and I'd like to have these conversations on the air, because uh, you're wondering, you know, why there would be this sort of reaction, right? Sure. Um, and I was actually wondering... Why would uh, the lieutenant governor have to set up, uh, you know, or preface uh, a prayer in in the hall? You know, the prayer is offered every every time the session uh, the senate meets. Mm -hmm. So, so why would Muslim community be any different? Uh, you know, in terms of uh, its introduction or or its rights and its responsibilities. Um, you know, um, I do not think uh, Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long yep. did anything wrong. I mean, she um, she did what she would have done for any other religion. She did exactly what she would have done. And, I, and as a Muslim, I don't want any special treatments. I want to be treated like every other uh, American. And, and that's what she did. And I, I appreciate her, um, uh, you know, uh, kindness. Uh, that she invited. This was a historic uh, moment for the Muslim community. This was the first time uh, Muslim community uh, mm -hmm. was invited to to offer an invocation um, in, in the Senate chamber, um, and it is it, it was my honor uh, to be there and make a make a prayer uh, uh, to to God to to help the lawmakers to guide them uh, and keep them on the right path. I understand. Did she make any mention of uh, of the fact? that there is great misunderstanding in this country of the role of, of uh, Muslims, especially in relation to what's happening worldwide with radicalism. Uh, no, she did not. Okay. Um, and, and I understand your point. I, I understand your point completely. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, uh, there should not be a need. I mean, the, the fact that there is a controversy, um, you know, that worries me. Uh, as an American, I, I do not believe that that is an American value. Um, that, that we should be worried because, you know, because of the religion of a person. No, I, I can appreciate that, but when you have the president of a country that is predominantly Muslim saying we have a problem with our religion, and when you have, you know, millions of people who unfortunately, and this is my opinion, have bastardized your religion and taken it uh, into their own context in order to slaughter people, establish uh, their own caliphate, then um, it does become a matter of public discussion, and I do think that people need to have a, a better understanding of that, and I understand also how you feel like, well, maybe you shouldn't have to explain that in the state legislature, but can you understand where in there might be people who are in the business of making laws and they are concerned about the effect of Sharia law and, uh, and, and how they would be concerned about that in a, in a country where aspects of Sharia law in other countries just don't work here when it comes to women's rights and the rights of homosexuals to live, things like that. As a proud Delawarean, as an American, uh, and as a Muslim. I do not have control over one one small section of, of a million people out of billion and a half right. uh, Muslims worldwide they decide to do or not to do. Uh, we have condemned them. We have spoken against them. We have written letters to the editor. We have uh, spoken out, out against it in, in, the, uh, mag in news magazines, in uh, radio shows, on TV, wherever we have an opportunity to speak out against it, we do that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, um, honestly, it, I, I do not think it is my uh, responsibility to control the actions uh, of, of someone else if, 
if someone has committed a crime, you know that person should be dealt with it. But as a as a, as a member of a of a uh, of a of a faith which has which comprises of 1.5 billion Muslims, uh, I do not have responsibility to defend the actions of every single person in the religion. I do not. Can, and, you know, can, can you I am under- responsible for my actions. I'm responsible for the, for the actions of my family. I'm responsible for the actions of my congregation. If somebody in my congregation acted up, you know, we would be the first people, we would be the first line of defense to make sure uh, that, that it is dealt with uh, properly. And let me add to let me add to that because there are too few Americans, too few Delawareans who are aware of the fact that over 200 of uh, suspected and then uh, many of them uh, proven to be radicalized Muslims have been turned into local and then federal authorities by members of their uh, their 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 own religion. Um, and, and people don't realize this, and I guess because it's not pushed toward them throughout uh, popular media on cable and broadcast TV. Well, thank you. Um, I rest my case. You know, uh, you, you said it uh, right, and, and I agree with you 100%. But can you understand, though, where lawmakers might be concerned, because what they hear about, and what we hear about a lot, is, is the Sharia law and concerns about that law. In fact, in this conversation, what I'd like to do is, is share with you uh, some things that many of us have heard and, and read and become very concerned about when it comes to Islam, because we're not students. Uh, we're not clerics, we're not imams, and, and just as you know, people who are not Christians, even though those who are, don't fully understand the context even of the, the New Testament versus the Old Testament at all. You know what I mean? So, sure. So when, when you see in the Quran, you know, a chapter and verse, like, like in chapter 4, verse 89, uh, that, you know, they but wish that ye should reject faith as they do, and thus be on the same footing as they, but take not friends from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah from what's forbidden. But if they turn renegades, or if they, if they deny Allah and Islam, seize them and slay them wherever you find them. When, you, when we read that, we say, wow, um, you're in trouble. You're in uh, their sights as well. And perhaps we are uh, from other Muslims. So what do you say to us when we see something like that and say, wow, that's, that's pretty frightening? These are rules of engagement when uh, when uh, war has been waged and people are involved in in uh, active warfare. We we are not in the state of war. You know this is this is our country. This is our home. We um, you know every day we get up and we go out uh, to to serve Delaware, to serve America, to to serve. Uh, the larger community uh, across the U.S. Mm-hmm. and and we worry about we worry about raising our children. We worry about the economy. We worry about healthcare. We worry about um, uh, you know safety and security. You know these are these are the concerns of of common uh, public. So the, the the text that you have quoted that is. Obviously, out of context, um, you know, that is about active war uh, uh, when that is going on. And, uh, you know, we, we don't live in a war zone. We live in Delaware, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand, and, and unfortunately, there are those who do live in a uh, state of war, not here in, in in Delaware, and and that is that is the concern. Like you're at war with someone, it could be Shia versus Sunni or whatever, and if they reject your version, your sect of, uh, of Islam, uh, now uh, they must be slain, but then, you know, and hadiths are, are different. These are collections of the words and actions uh, of the prophet, correct? That's right. And when we see something that says, the prophet says, if somebody, a Muslim, discards his religion, kill him, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I mean, no wonder that Muslims are the number one victim uh, of radicalism, and then when we see something like that, that also frightens us as well. So, so I'll, I'll take you back to the fundamental principle uh, that is explained to Quran and through Hadith, and that is the concept of uh, justice and peace. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, in the West, we have a mantra called, you know, no justice, no peace. Right. In Islam, the mantra is reversed. Islam, you know, Quran emphasizes so much on the on the uh, establishment of peace. Before justice can can happen, that that it, it would surprise you that, that that those are not the things that 
uh, that have been brought about uh, or talked about uh, um, as much. So, so what that basically means is that if you had a claim, you had a grievance against someone who, who uh, you know, transgressed against you, the principle says maintain peace. Do not, uh, you know, go for justice until peace has been established. Okay, yes. the music's playing. They're going to cut us off. They're, I mean, okay. they're, going to, they're going to cut us off. So please, uh, hang on. Naveed Bakir, okay. reset the, this topic when we come back on The Rick Jensen Show. Hang on, please. So Dave Lawson and Colin Benini left the Senate opening prayer, Islamic prayer. And one of those who was delivering the Islamic prayer is Naveed Bakir, Executive Director of the Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs here in Delaware. And and I can understand where Colin Benini and Dave are coming from, saying, look, Sharia law does not uh, parallel with you know our democracy, uh, our respect uh, for women, as we see it being displayed through the radicalism that's on the front pages and on the news all the time. But behind that uh, are the multitudes of millions of Muslims who don't see the Koran that way. They, they, uh, they, they are not violent people. In fact, they are victims more often than Christians and Jews and others. And so that's why I invited Naveed to be on the show right now to talk about these things uh, just face-to-face. -face. And Naveed, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, uh, so right. before, you were making the point that, you know, there's a saying here, you know, no justice, no peace, which really in this country means, well, if we don't get the justice we think we, uh, we deserve, then we're going to show you no peace and we're going to be violent. And you're saying in Islam, it's really the opposite of that. That's right. And for, for hundreds of years, that had been the situation that even if there was a, a bad ruler who came in who was brutal and who was a dictator, uh, people bore up the dead because God promises that, you know, that, that time will pass and, the, and peace will come. However, uh, you know, in the last few years, that, that whole, um, um, you know, thinking has been toppled. And you see now, um, you know, Iraq and, and Syria and Egypt and, and all the other uh, countries where we, where we keep hearing about all these, um, uh, you know, horrific crimes going on, that they have been unleashed. That is a situation that we have no control over. Uh, and sitting in, in Delaware, I don't. You know, I don't have any control over what others do. I don't have control over uh, or, or, or the foreign policies. You know, all I can speak about is, you know, how we live in Delaware, what we believe in, what we practice. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, yesterday's event, I took it as a teachable moment uh, for all of us yeah, that, that, you know, we felt that we were secure living in the state of Delaware, um, you know, but but. We found out that Islamophobic rhetoric is real, and it is visible even in the chambers of the most important government institutions. Can you, know, you, under, if, can you understand if, why someone who represents our kind of democracy uh, might uh, be uh, offended at, or at least reticent to acknowledge that which represents uh, a Sharia law that does not fit into our culture? Yeah, but, but you know, quote-unquote, your kind of democracy is my kind of democracy as well. Exactly. You know, this, and, is, and this is what I believe in. I mean, I don't, I don't think that, that, you know, I have a different uh, a democracy model in my mind. I think this is, this is uh, you know, this is not perfect. So when we but, come back... But we... this is good. This, is, this works. So Naveed, Naveed Bakir, by the way, is Executive Director of Delaware Council on Global Muslim Affairs. A couple things. Number one, what they're doing to uh, make sure young people, especially are not radicalized, and and what? How do you live in, as a uh, in a democracy with uh, Sharia law? We'll get to that after this. So Dave Lawson Calvinini walked out during the prayer state legislature yesterday because he was Islamic, and uh, you had an imam, Tariq Evis, as well as David Bakir, executive director of the Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs. They were there, and uh, they came back after the prayer. And I've talked with Dave, and uh, I read what Colin's saying. is because, look, you have uh, countries around this world that are run by Sharia law, and it's incompatible with our democracy here. And so I have Naveed on the phone right now. I want to get to that, but can we get to Herb's phone call first, Naveed? 
Sure. Thank you very much. It's Herb and Bethany. Mm -hmm. Herb, what's your question? Well, the one I admire, they call them for doing what they did in their... You have to speak up. We've got a lousy connection here. You say you admire Dave and Colin. Okay. Yeah. And I uh, have read the Koran and studied a little bit. I'm not nowhere near as knowledgeable uh, about it as you're yet. He's very knowledgeable about his faith. But in the Koran, the part that I read, uh, they in there that the infidel who does not believe in the faith that uh, will have his head cut off. Right. And that is not a request. That's an order of the Koran to believe. Okay, so... So, oh. so you had, so you put that to Navid. Uh, the problem is uh, in the Quran. There's an order. If you're an infidel, you're going to have your head cut off. Uh, what do you say that's to that, uh, Navid? So, first of all, again, this this goes back to the rules of engagement. This is only during the uh, time of infidel. Is a very gross translation of the word. It is the the actual word uh, that is used. Uh, you know, the closest translation would come in would be the attacker. So, so if somebody attacked your house and you were to defend, you know, those are the rules of engagement in that type of situation. I would like to, I would like to go back to the situation that why, why was it that in the first place I went to, to Senate? You know, I went there to build bridges. I'm not here to impose anything that I believe on anybody else. Everybody, you know, has, has a right to their own opinion, uh, you know, and, and I like to think that the, the way of life that I have chosen for myself uh, is is the one that respects everybody. It makes me a productive citizen of this state, of, the, of this country. Um, and, and I went there to build that bridges. My presence in the Senate was supposed to be a message of support and show off my love and my patriotism. You know, Delaware is my home. This is where we work. This is where we raise our children. This is where we belong. And, and I like to believe that this belongs to us, too. You know, my, you know, uh, Senator Lawson said that, you know, uh, Muslims pray for the demise of America. I'm sorry, I, I, I disagree with that assertion. My rise, my community's right, rise is associated, directly associated with the rise of America, with the rise of the state. And, and America's demise or states, the state's demise is our own demise. You know, this is, uh, this, this is a very surprising statement that I heard from him. You know, Muslims, and he, he also talked about, you know, how he has served this country. Well, I have a news. Muslims have given lives for America from the time of George Washington. You know, a lot of people might not have even heard Bampit Muhammad. He fought the Virginia line between years 1775 and 1783 alongside George Washington, Yusuf Ben Ali, and there were many other Muslim soldiers who fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill, Battle of, Battle of Saratoga, Battle of Stony Point. You know, these are just the name of you. You visit Arlington National Cemetery, you see a lot of uh, Muslim soldiers buried there for their service. For, for their selfless, selfless service and for their ultimate sacrifice. Even today, hundreds, thousands of uh, Muslims serve in the U.S. military. And, and somebody made a comment um, earlier today that there are only a few uh, Muslim graves uh, in Arlington. But yes, of course, there are a few, because we are not even 3% of America's population. But guess what? You know, 10% of all American physicians are Muslims. One in ten Muslim American households have a physician or a medical doctor in their own home. Muslims serve in the critical disciplines, you know, in science, technology, education, medicine, programmers, corporate managers, teachers, small business owners, you name it, any discipline. So, so, so this I, is I, our I, country too. And I, Yes, and I agree. I absolutely agree, and I think this is where the, the failure in the Senate occurred is in that there was no preface given. Someone saying, like I say, and I, I will start the show with a conversation saying, many there are many misconceptions of Muslims in America. Muslims can be democratic. They do not believe that adulterers uh, should be stoned to death, as we have seen happen with the Islamic State in Syria, as we have seen that happen even in Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, elsewhere. But what we see on the news, what we read in the papers and online, are these acts by the radicals and, uh, and by the terrorists, as well as supposedly legitimate governments as well. And, and I, I think the problem is, just as you articulated, 
people don't know. And so, yes, I, I think there was a failure in uh, in that that sort of introduction, saying, "Look, there's many many uh, misconce misconceptions, and we'd like to start this conversation." You see, I mean, what do you say to someone? Naveed, when they say, well, wait, I saw in the news that there have been women who have been stoned to death in these countries, legitimate countries, because they were adulterers. The men rarely get stoned. I think there was one case in the last four or five years where the man and the woman were both stoned to death. A truck comes, up, comes by, they dump a bunch of stones, people throw them when they're buried up to their chest or their neck, and we see that, and, and then we read, oh, well, that's the Sharia law. Now, here in America, we think, well, we certainly don't want that. And yet, what you're saying, and millions of others, is in America, you don't abide by that uh, version of Sharia law. Is that correct? Well, you, you just took it out of my mouth. You know, this is exactly what I was, I was going to say. That I don't have control over what happens in other countries. What, what other, I can speak for myself. I can speak for my community. I can speak for people in, you know, that I know. And... And if anybody even proposed this idea, you know, I'll be the first person standing against it. You know, the, the, the verse of Quran that, that we read last night in the Senate, you know, it starts with stand firm for justice. Okay. You know, even if, even if it is against yourself, even if it is against your parents, even if it, it's, it's against your kin, even if it's against the rich or the poor, stand against injustice. So let me ask you this. How do you reconcile this when uh, the law of Islam is Sharia law and that incorporates not just your personal life but also business life and political life. It, it incorporates governing and government. How do you and other Muslims separate that from you know the, what, what needs to be the rules of, of governance uh, into American life and say, well, you know what, we can indeed believe in a democracy. I guess that's really the question right there. I mean, how, how do you separate those two? See, we don't have to separate anything because I don't think that th that type of ideology that is being practiced in some of those, you know, Muslim countries is, is even Islamic. You know, there's, you know, there are some countries that claim that they have Sharia law, but but they don't. I mean, this, uh, these ideas um, that come in because of the cultural situation and mixed into religion, uh, you know, this is this is beyond my understanding that, you know, Quran does not say uh, to stone anyone uh, to death. Quran does not uh, uh, talk about, you know, uh, all of these uh, horrific things that that you have just described, but they do happen. And I recognize that, I understand that, and I'm saying that I don't have any control over what those people do. All I can do is speak against it. So and is, I'm doing is that. It, I'm doing that right now. What is, oh, uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here by trying to understand everything I'm reading uh, live on the air. <laughs> I know, but it was, oh, um, uh, chapter 12, verse 2, what is that then? So, so that is described as a sin. Mm -hmm. It is a sin. Uh, you know, and and I don't think any religion, you know, even if Christianity or Judaism or any other religion you think about, that that is not recognized as a sin. But oh, in the Old Testament, uh, you know, death for homosexuality. Right? But as Christians, we don't follow that. Jesus came back and said, you know what, uh, we're going to clear some things up, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, things like that, although that was never specifically mentioned in the New Testament uh, as, uh, as determined to buy the by the church, but, you know, we don't just kill people because they're gay. Unfortunately, that does happen in some other countries, though. Yes, and, and like I said, I don't have any control over that. Yeah. You know, Muslim community in Delaware, you know, we, we practice uh, in front of everyone. You know, we, what we believe is in front of everyone. Our mosques are open. You're always welcome to come to our mosque, sit down with us, have a conversation with us. Uh, you know, this, this uh, whole episode has revealed how many... How many friends I had, you know, on social media, people are coming in who have known me and my family. They're, they're, they're talking about all the good things that I never thought were big deals. You know, I thought they were, they were just usual things, normal things. That well, again, you know, and here's another, here's another concern, too. So, uh, Islam normalized, and then more radicals come in, and uh, they sneak into your, your mosques and your community and your groups. But then... 
Well, I want to talk about this organization you started uh, to actually um, confront radicalism Mm -hmm. here in Delaware, especially talking to young people who seem to become radicalized on the Internet and things like that. Tell us about that. So, so our purpose is to, to address that even before that can happen. You know, we want our children to be, uh, to be busy with constructive things. But, you know, they, they don't even have time to go and, and, you know, have the opportunity to be, quote-unquote, radicalized, whatever that means. Uh, you know, for example, just this weekend, this coming weekend, we have uh, we are uh, we are one of the major partners with uh, Delaware River uh, Cleanup, um, and last year we had about uh, sixty uh, members of the Muslim community, most of them young uh, children, come out and spend a day cleaning up river, so that they know that they that this river belongs to them, that they need to make sure that not only they have to clean up the mess that others have put in, that it is their responsibility never to, to uh, pollute that, uh, that natural resource. Uh, that, is, that is their responsibility. Uh, we take them out. Our children go um, work with Meals on Wheels. They work with, uh, with the Delaware Food Bank. They, they go to uh, nursing homes. Uh, to, to to give company to uh, el- to the elderly and to assure them that you know that people care about them. This is what we are teaching our children. Um, and I wish uh, we we had more members of our community who could be seen doing all this. You know, we we are a smaller community um, in Delaware. So when we do things, you know, they don't get advertised. You know. Uh, we rarely get um, uh, time on the media, and I, I, I appreciate that you, you you have given the Muslim community a voice today. Um, but this is this is a rare opportunity uh, that we get. Ten thousand, approximately ten thousand Muslims in Delaware. Is that right? That's right. That's yeah. right. So, what do you do? Out of, if, out, of if, a, out of a million, out of a million, and, uh, and uh, almost a million population. Yeah. And and your specific organization. Is designed to do what you said, you know, uh, bring uh, young Muslim boys and girls into the uh, general community. But what do you do when you find some teenager who's who is uh, being attracted to uh, that which is being promoted by the Islamic State? So we haven't have we haven't encountered any such situation yet. But there are examples from other communities where they have enco- encountered it and. And they did the right thing. They immediately reached out to uh, to the law enforcement to to report those suspicious activities to you know, especially uh, you know, in in several cases, even parents they have called on uh, uh, you know law enforcement on their own children when they felt that there was something uh, wrong going on to to address those issues be- before they become a big problem. Um, and and I can tell you that uh, uh, you know in Delaware, uh, our 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 focus is not just children. Children are, are one important constituency that we cater for. But the bigger challenge is to involve adults. You know, the the uh, the you know the adults. Everybody. Yeah. Kids. Let me yeah. uh, let me take a break here, David, and then when we come back, one last question from a listener, a uh, guy called Smart Bob, because he is, okay. and give you the last word. Already. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. On the phone. David Bakir, Executive Director of Delaware Council on Global and Muslim Affairs here in Delaware. Keep it here. On the phone, David Bakir, Executive Director, Delaware Council, Global Muslim Affairs. Great conversation. I hope it's the beginning of many. Let's get to Smart Bob. He's uh, on the upstate line, 529-1017. Bob, you're on. Hi, Rick. Hello, Imam. He's not Hello, an imam, he's, uh, but he is a tech genius. Oh, okay. It's just David. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, my take after reading the uh, article in the journal today, I'm not going to relitigate the differences that we have. Um, I see an opportunity. We, as a group of Christians, I'm Catholic, have had, like many states for the last decade, been prevented from opening... Um, what you would call governmental meetings, school boards with a prayer, uh, high school coaches taking a knee to pray to thank God that no one was in- injured after a football game have been suspended or fired. I think supporting any religion's ability to speak supports us all. 
That's my point. That's a good one. I appreciate that. Thanks, Bob. I agree. We have uh, very active um, interfaith councils uh, where we go to, uh, to different churches and synagogues and, and um, rabbis and uh, priests. They come to our uh, mosques and they pray with us. They, they uh, talk to our congregations and we talk to their congregations. Uh, teach tolerance. They all want their children to grow up um, as good people, as good human beings, as good good citizens, um, and and be be good citizens themselves. So uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Smart Bob. I yeah. appreciate your <laughs> comment, and I look forward to working with you. All right, uh, we gotta go. We got a minute left, and uh, I get what Kambanini's saying. You have a right to pray, as do I, and I have a right to be offended by what you believe. And I listen to you, Navid, and you are offended by what the radicals believe, and you have a right for that as well. Do you have a last word for us? Sure. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to uh, uh, highlight that, that the increasing Islamophobia, it is isolating and marginalizing and disenfranchising the Muslim community across the years. And I don't want um, uh, our communities to be marginalized uh, and live in the shadows. You know, even though Muslim community is less than 3% of the U.S. population, you know, as I told you, 10% of the Americans are, are uh, you know, physicians. Mm-hmm. And, and they do all, all these uh, uh, extraordinary jobs every day uh, in America. Um, we, as Muslim Americans, we are younger and we are the future uh, of America. You know, uh, 67% of uh, adult American Muslim population, we are under 40 years of age. And with that... Compare uh, that with, with the 67% of adult American population that is over 40 years of age. You, now, what are we supposed to do? You know, uh, this is this is my question to you and your audience. What are, what we, are we supposed, supposed to, do? to do? And with that, you know, Naveed, I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you, sir. All across America, 866-907-3339, 866-90-RED-EYE. He is Eric Hurley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome to the show. 